Shoo! Welcome back, folks, to a another episode. Melee, did you just get excited? Every time I shoot, both of these guys get wound up. You guys excited? Oh, God, rip, chill. Hey, calm down. This is a big day, really. This is, hey, you relax. This is a big day, folks. We are starting our official trapping season. Pool Jet, you ever trapped anything? Nope. Zach, you ever trapped anything? Nope. Me, barely. Caught a few things. Uh, not that good at it. Hoping to be better at it this year. But this is what we've got to dangle with. Bin one, bin two. There's some bins over there. Th this is what it looks like. It's like when you put Christmas lights away, right? You're like, you good. take your time, you do it great, and then when you open up the next year, you're like, who the hell put these away? This, that's exactly what happened here because I tried to put it away good, and it looks like a rat's nest, and these guys are not gonna help that situation. But before we get into it, I wanna let you guys know that GuggenSquad.com has 20% off everything on the store using promo code DANGLE. There's stocking stuffers. The Guggen stocking stuffer, you can get the new clickbait in. It's the bladed jig that we just came out with. That will be linked down below as well. There's a beefcake stocking stuffer, a bunch of other stuff. I'll put a bunch of stuff down in the description down below. But make sure you use promo code DANGLE. Get 20% off. It's the biggest sale we've ever done site-wide and it ends on Cyber Monday at the end of Cyber So like the end of like today, the end of Cyber Monday is when the sale ends. So Lucy, can you not for two seconds? You listen, I'm trying to do an intro right now. So the plan is Why would you do that? What, why, like what part of this is like, yeah, I'm just gonna do this. Like why, why is he just running around? Relax. We are gonna be getting into trapping season today. So what we need to do is we need to organize this. We're gonna lay everything out in alphabetical, in order. No, we're not gonna, we're just gonna put it all in categories. See what I have, take some inventory, see what needs to be fixed. We know we did a lot of waxing of the traps and dying and sort of stuff. So I hope we don't have to do anything of that today because that's a lot of work. But our goal is to set out, my goal would be five, at least five traps in the backyard, down yonder, for bobcats and coyotes and you know raccoons too. Raccoons are more of like the dog proof, which we could do, but those aren't really as exciting. I wanna do like the buried ones where the bobcats, the coyotes will come over. And then we're even thinking putting some cameras, putting the Moultrie cell cams on them. So then I get a text message saying, oh, boom, you got a bobcat. Or maybe the coyotes are, are sneaky and get around it and then I can study kind of how they're doing it. So if you guys wanna see us put trail cameras on the physical traps where you guys can watch them get trapped, you guys are gonna have to let me know. So what we're gonna do, gonna take this, lay it all out and then reorganize it. And then we're gonna go down to the animals. They are in need of some hay and grain and all that stuff. Make sure they are alive and not dead. And then we're gonna go set some traps. So you guys stay tuned. <laughs> Trapping season, boys. Well, my traps did not stay in the mintiest of condition because they're rusted, rusted, rusted. These were brand new, shiny last year, rusted. So I don't know if I put them away wet or they just got moisture in there over the winter. I'm not really sure, to be honest. I, I mean, a rusty trap still catches them. I mean, I've heard people say rusty trap's a good trap. It's just, you gotta worry about it catching a little bit when it fires. It's not, it's not gonna snap and fire as fast. The only nice thing about the rust means there's no oil on it. They, they put oil on them to keep them from rusting. Well, the oil is what you try to boil off because it smells. So you boil off the oil, then you dip them in wax. And then that's a good trap because the wax has no scent and it can fire quickly. Really? But these things, we actually dipped a lot of these in wax and they still turned out looking like this. Um, I mean, I think we dipped actually almost all of these ones for sure. These ones were brand new. I don't think I did much with these, but those I dipped. So, I mean, I've caught plenty of stuff with the rusty traps, not the end of the world. Um, so you've got your number twos, you got your threes, fours, and number, I mean, you're talking, that's big daddy. Uh, my foot would fit in that. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. that's that's how you. That would hurt. That's how you catch a trespasser. Oh true. Set this down there. Let his foot get caught in there. Yeah. Rip the buddy's toes. And then we've got lots of snares right here. These are actually those are cable restraints. And then snare, 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 snare. I mean, look at all these snares. Snares, dozen, two dozen, three dozen, four to five. Like tons. I bought so many. I have no idea why I bought so many last year. 
because I can't physically set this many out. Well, that's pretty much what we've got. A lot of our dog proofs are actually out down by the shed, not out and active, but like we had set them out and we'd never really picked them up um, for the raccoon. So that's what we have for dog proofs. Earth anchors, you've got all these guys. That's for your snares, your little off ring things. We're gonna show you guys later in this video, show you step-by-step step how to set a trap. You got LaTeX things, you got your hammers, your sifter, your J hooks, S hooks, your spreader, your auger digger thing. And then we didn't even go through this much, but boom, look at that guy. This is full of sheep's wool and nasty scent urine glands. God knows what else is in here. Nasty stuff. Whew, nice good whiff of that. So, trap, Lucy, what are you eating? That can't be anything healthy. What are you doing? So, we got everything out, ready to go. Yeah, no, hey, no, we, no, no. we're just gonna go ahead and shut that. That thing smells like booty. So, everything's out, ready to rock and roll. We're gonna go ahead and load up stuff. This is my trapping, my trapping wagon right here. Put all your tools in here. We gotta get some dirt in there. I don't think we're gonna have time to get dry dirt today, but it's really not that cold, so we should be okay. We're gonna load out there. We're not gonna do, I mean, we could do some cable restraints. Just make sure the doggies don't get there. It's basically your only... Millie, see, if, if she's doing that, I think a coyote would like it. Look at that, that's that's proven right there. She also eats ass, so True. I don't know if that really means all that much. We're not sure, I, I mean, I'll take some cable restraints with me. We're gonna be putting these traps where these dogs never go. Um, it's gonna be kind of down by the cabin, but up in the hills, they never go there. This collar on Millie is an electric fence um, that keeps her around my house, so as long as that stays on her, we should be good to go. But, you know, putting out, anytime you put out cable restraints around dogs, it couldn't end well. So we, unless I find like some minty, minty trail, otherwise I'm probably just gonna put a foothold. Because a foothold, even if these guys get kind of foothold, which shouldn't happen, but even if it does, they're not gonna die. It won't even break their paw. It just holds them there. It doesn't do it. It, it all, it'll get swollen. But I know like Trapper Jay, he's trapped his cat like eight times, he said. It just it just keeps getting trapped in his bobcat trap. So uh, it doesn't hurt him. It catches cats. That's all that matters. So we're gonna go ahead and load up the materials for today. We'll see you guys stay tuned. Shoo! All righty, folks. Well, we made it to... Uh to the trapping spot here. We're up on this freaking windy hill. I was to give you guys a reference. The cabin's there, pond's there, my house is there. I shot the buck down there. That's basically where we are. So we have put, we put a trail camera right there at one point. We made this trail right here. Well, I mean, I guess animals have kind of made it, but over there, we put a trail camera at one point. I remember seeing two bobcats. This is kind of a good intersection. You've got them climbing here, coming from there, and then there's another hill down there. So this is a good area, plus the wind will really kind of whip around the uh, scentage of it. So I think we're gonna put it here, but I'm gonna try to get creative. And you need a backing when you're, sometimes, sometimes when you're trying. So something like this probably will work pretty good. Right there, you put your coyote set so they can't, because they're gonna come to investigate it, right? Yeah. You don't want them to go behind it, so you make them come here. You put it's called backing. Ideally, you would have a little bit more, because they definitely could come in, sniff from this side, so we can grab, let's grab a few more pieces of wood. I usually don't do this. I usually, but I also don't usually set, put sets on an open trail like this. Like that. No, that definitely looks natural. It doesn't really matter. I don't think they're gonna, they're not gonna care too much. I, I, but again, ideally, you're gonna have your trap here, your scent hole, you're gonna put it up under that. So that way they think there's a mice, a mouse or a mice living in it. When they come to check it out, they would ideally go around here, but you want them to step here. So you put, it's called backing. A lot of times you do like a big tree or a hay bale or something. But I think this will work. So now that we have our backing established, let's get the traps in. So take your hammer. You're gonna, this is gonna dig, dig down where you put your trap. These are pretty big traps, so you're gonna wanna go fairly wide. I always take my hammer and pack it down. Now let's see if this fits. So that fits good like that. My jaws might need to widen it up just a little bit on this backside. Now I know a lot of people wear gloves and you're probably supposed to be wearing gloves for this, but my buddy Trapper Jay doesn't usually wear them until he starts dealing with the, the scent. You're getting human scent on it, but it is what it is. I don't think it's gonna make or break it. It's gonna sit like that. That should work pretty good. So this is what we call an earth anchor. So what this does is it basically is an anchor Make sure when you catch something, it can't run away. Put that there, hammer it down. And I go until, I mean, you can go as deep as you want, but this ground's tough. They're not gonna get out. So then you tap it, pull it out. Make sure it's set. Right there, see? Can't get out. And then you can physically pull it, but no coyote or bobcat's pulling that out. Just like that. So that way your trap sits perfectly flat. Now we've got to set, now if you guys remember last year, 
snap this tip of the finger pretty much clean off. I've got mad PTSD from it, so I'm not gonna be a badass and set these with my hands, I'm gonna do it with my feet, which is the safest way to do it. One foot here, one foot here, spread them. Now these are dogless straps, so it should catch. Like that click. Okay, so she's hot. She's ready to rock and roll. Dude, you, I talk about PTSD, dude, it's bad. Like, I don't wanna touch it. So normally I grab the ears, they call this the ears is fine but when it snaps up it can really can like just rip this whole skin off that's normally how i grab it but dude i've got like i've got to get past this we're gonna set all these out tonight i got a mad fear right now so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna be a weenie and i'm gonna set it but i'm gonna set it to where it's not a light trigger and then bet it that way that gives me a little bit more forgiveness put that way up there that way that pan's got to be pressed pretty hard so i think ideally most people they grab it like this this is a safe place to grab the trap dude i'm like this is weird because even after this happened i was not this sketched bad it's so bad i like don't want anything to do with this i'm being a weenie hut junior right now bed it in there so it can't you don't want it to move it's like that and then what i'm gonna do is take this and just see if i can get it to set ding ding boys dude i'm so nervous this is bad i feel stupid but it's just how it is so i just realized i didn't even put a pan cover on it i can lay it over the top though so i take the pan cover so go ahead and take these guys these are your latex covers so this is just going to uh help keep the dirt from you don't want the dirt under the pan dirt gets under the pan it can't get pressed on top like that you gotta watch trapper jay he's one of my buddies if you want to learn how to trap that's what you gotta watch i'm being weenie hut junior here so go ahead and just pack your pack the sides in the problem is i don't have dirt i have dirt to pack in and i don't have dirt to sprinkle over the top all right so once your trap is packed it's not perfect you want to be able to touch on one side and not move touch on the other side touch on all of it and it shouldn't move so we're close it's good enough for me so you gotta have a little sifty guy like this you take your dirt ideally you want dry dirt but this is pretty close and you dump it in here you can shake it around till it's completely covered these pieces yeet Look at that. It's like nobody was even here. If you really want to, you can take this little brush, flatten her out a little bit. Look at that. You wouldn't even know there's a trap there. So we're not done. You don't need one of these, but I'm lazy. So a lot of people do is they offset their trap. If you watch a dog, if they go sniff something, let's say this is what they want to sniff. They put their paws like this and they lean, right? So a lot of people don't put their trap directly in line. They do it offset. So they put their trap right here. So when the dog steps and leans in, it gets trapped. Trapper Day does, never does that. I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna put it in the middle to be honest. Ideally you get them kind of dancing around it long enough to where they don't really think much of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it up here. Drill a hole. Now the deeper that hole, the longer it's gonna take for that cat to realize what it is. They're gonna walk by it and there's a lot of different scents going on. So it's gonna take a long time for them to figure it out. The deeper you go, you can go as deep as you want, but that to me looks pretty darn good. So bait wise, what we're dealing with here is, let's see, that stuff. This is the good stuff. What I need is, a, I need a twig. Anyone, anyone see a twig handy? Give that a good one of these guys. Throw that down the hole. Stick that down there just like that. So that's your, this is technically lure. So there's bait and there's lure. So we got lure lure down and urine. I use urine too. But then you need actual bait. We got bait. So this is like, it's supposed to like represent something that a coyote would want to eat. What's the difference between bait and lure? So lure is like, a, it's usually just, like this is like ground up mice. Like it's physical meat. Oh, how neat. Yeah, that's what that is. Lure is like glands. So lure scent is much more potent. So lure will bring gotcha. them in from a distance. Once they get close, they smell the bait, which is like food. I'll show you a couple different techniques as we go throughout the night on some different ones. But this guy, all right, I'm gonna do this. I'm just doing this over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw some of this. Or a lot of times like just carry a little spoon with you. So something like that, throw that also down the hole. He said, you don't want these fruity pebbles hanging out here. Okay, so. I really don't smell. I feel like we need to use something else. This kind of sucks. This don't smell at all. Well, it's all right. We'll have to, we may just want to run home and get a shovel anyway. Okay, so that's done. So, I mean, here's some liquid mouse. <laughs> that's that good stuff there, guy. Liquid mouse. Go ahead and throw that in there. And then I've even got some coyote urine. See, I like to just throw a bunch of stuff on it. Coyote pee all over the tree. Lastly, you don't have to do this. Sheep's wool. 
natural scent and visual whether they think it's a rabbit mouse whatever so take that just go ahead and shove that down the hole so what the what will happen is they will try to pull this out it'll give them something to grab onto if i get it in there there good enough take these gloves off throw them away there's a coyote sit. so if, and if you want to i just took those freaking gloves off but if you're worried give it one of these guys too so with coyotes there's two tactics one you hide it two you make it look like a coyote was here dug it up and buried a bone or buried food under there they're just like house dogs but they know they act in the same way so you don't have to camouflage it if you don't want to for this one since it's kind of in the open pasture i'm going to so take some grass and i know you're not supposed to put your human scent on it but i'm going to anyway just like that that way look don't even see nothing they'll come step caught them. so one down a few more to go Shoo! all righty folks made it to the next spot here so we got deer blind here we've seen a lot of big bucks here but just haven't had a chance to hunt it so we have a camera that i've seen a couple coyotes at so i'd like to honestly put this set where this could physically see it um that way i can see it on camera at least get pictures of it so because i think they've been like they've been running down there cameras here so just right off the side of this road and we might just need like even just like grabbing a piece off of that like something a little bushier for the backing would probably be pretty good i think right put it right there yourself sky guy right there so we put this little pine tree branches backing same strat we got the trapper the lure the urine the bait loaded everything up in the hole and there's your trap and the, this camera like i said is on it so we should at least it's not video but it's pictures and itself so it should text me and i'll let you guys know if we end up getting something out of this that'd be the easy way of checking trap is uh checking your cams or whatnot but we're gonna make our way down this hill towards the cabin this trail funnels a lot of animals i've seen lots of coyotes and raccoons so we're probably gonna go about halfway stick one go to the bottom stick one and then maybe stick another one on the trail leading down to the pond i always see coyote poop up there and then i guess probably throw a couple raccoon we probably put a raccoon trap out right around here if we want to we can we can go a little bit further see you guys down the hill Shoo! All right, so made it down the hill just a little bit. I just put that last trap right up and around that corner. But I'm thinking, man, this looks bobcatty. If that makes any sense? It looks like bobcats would live here. So I'm thinking somewhere around here, I'm gonna try to dangle a uh, feather as well. So I'm trying to decide, do you go? Do you make them step down? Probably. Then step up. That way they put their the weight of their body. Mm -hmm. If they're climbing up, all their weights on their back. So if we're gonna do it, we need to do it heading downhill. We want to utilize one of these trees for backing. Would probably. Be, I mean, I've caught a lot of animals without without worrying about backing as much as i'm i mean i'm kind of worrying about it quite a bit right now but um i mean we could use that i know my i'm thinking like in there just like up in that corner right there i think we're gonna do a bobcast we're gonna hang hang a little feather they're curious they'll come up and they'll bat at it and then poof, get trapped so we're gonna go ahead bobcat set number one we have two coyotes out working on bobcat number one Well, folks, there's your bobcat set. Got the red gooey stuff up top, bait in the bottom, nice feather in the wind right above it. You can see right here is where the trap is. Bobcat trap number one, done. Next trap, easy peasy raccoon dog proof. So these are setters. I didn't. I learned about these like two years deep into trapping. These will these will change your life. Oh God, yeah. Help get it started. Pull that lever down, and then that thing has to rest. Right on that. Okay, set that guy down. Take your stake, go ahead and stake him in. I ain't going nowhere. Take some Millie Lucy's dog food. 
There you go. Raccoon trapping is way faster, way easier. A lot of people, they'll come and trap all their raccoons in their trapping spots because raccoons will also get into those bobcats and coyote sets, which is kind of annoying because you saw how much time it takes. This is much faster. So if you guys have a raccoon problem, this is what I suggest using. So we're going to go ahead and go down the hill a little bit more and uh, set out another coyote trap. Shoo! All right, made it to the next spot, folks. Cheese and rice. Forgot how much trapping, how much work trapping is. Lucy, mail it. I would really take you. I'd really let you run around. But we're literally trying to catch a cousin of yours, which wouldn't end well for these guys. So this next one, I like this trail. So we just set those right up there. And then right here is where the cabin's getting built, down yonder. So I'm thinking, you can see a trail here. There's a little one there. I think this tree, because as they come up, as they go down, and we don't have to do it on the up, we could do it on the side. So that way, because if you, they're going uphill, they're not gonna put a lot of pressure. So I would say just like right, right here is where we're gonna put this guy. And we can even leave some of these little sticks as kind of some overhang backing. But right here, right along the trail, there's trail, trail. Get another cat set out. Alrighty, folks, we got one more left. Setting it out. Cabin build, OG pond, right on this trail. Now, I always see coyote poop on this trail, and that's why we're doing it. And you've got some natural backing by this thing. So set it right down in here. Boom. They walk along it, and uh, they're going to get done dead. What's over here? Oh, we got old moose. Look at that guy. He's ripping. That's the old, uh, the old deer. But so this spot seems pretty good. It's nice and narrow. So I don't think they're going to, basically, if they want to walk this trail right here. So we're going to go ahead and do the last coyote set, and uh, well, we'll come check them tomorrow. This one's looking good, boys. I'm feeling good about it. So this is what it kind of looks like. Basically, they're gonna walk along. So you see, you got dirt hole, you got lure, stuff like that. I think it's gonna attract one. I, I don't think there's a lot of backing in like side. There's backing, but the side, I don't know. This might be the one. It, it looks good. I just don't know if they're, I have a feeling they're gonna, there's a lot of space for them to step. Ideally, you would take some branches and stuff, but sometimes less is more. Sometimes you just let them, let them really, you know, not be nervous and like get in there and let them start ripping out the fuzz and, I'll even shove it down there just a little bit more. I can they barely see it. And once they start kind of digging around in there, I think that'll that'll do the trick. So that's five total. One being very specific for Bobcat. The rest are just coyote slash bobcat so those are our traps we, we ended up setting two dog proofs i believe i think i only showed you guys one of those so that's a good start sun's starting to go down so we're gonna come out in the morning and give it a look you guys stay tuned Shoo! all righty folks millie you stay you stay be good what's going on folks it's the next day time to check our trap line and we're starting off with the old classic the old yep been there done that look at this guy pulled my fuzz out it's a pretty good head and right. trap yeah it's, it's right it's right it here can you touch it for me yeah, I'm all right. We got <laughs> Banjo's trap lord here. So this is the fuzz that I stuck down in that hole and it's pulled out. So I would assume something that pulls out would be like a raccoon probably. I feel like coyotes wouldn't like, maybe they would pull that out. But we've been bamboozled though. Like, okay, so maybe there's a little depression there. Maybe because I'm pretty sure the, the pad or the pressure plate's there. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe these logs are too much. Maybe we just take these guys and... Let's just yeet these out of the way and just do something like that. That way there's a little less. Yeah, we'll re we'll re-scent and bait it. Basically what we do, if you guys are new, we run a trap line and basically we add to it and manage the trap line until we trap stuff. And then it's a, it's a progressive thing uh, throughout trapping season. So yeah, 
I kind of like that better without a backing. I feel like it's a lot less suspicious. So let's put some new bait in there, new lure, put that stuffing back in there and see if something walks on it. We will catch you guys at the next trap. Shoo! All right, we're at the next one and well, imagine that. Well, there's a, those prints on there? You see those little dimples? Yeah. That's gotta be, right? So here's our backing. I, I can't tell like if that's one or if that's uh, multiple yeah. right there. Something's walked on that though. So is it right there? Cause that's your pan cover, yeah, right? Yeah, wow. I, yeah, you can see my pan cover. It's right here. So something's definitely pushed on it just a little bit, but it's not enough to trigger it. So we could move this one or we're just, we could rebait it and leave it. Let's say let's try new bait. Maybe try a different bait. That might be what we have to do. I think we're just gonna rebait it, recover the pan cover a little bit, leave it. I say we rebait and relure and just kind of remake it. And we're gonna take out the backing. Maybe the backing's too much. Um, we need to make it a little bit more natural. Maybe they're, they're weary about it. You wouldn't think. We've never really trapped a coyote back here. So you wouldn't think they'd be very educated, but you never know. So go ahead and just get rebaited and we'll go to the next one. <laughs> We did it. Well, we were checking. That trap needs some maintenance. The one with the feather dangle. But look, Junior. Ricky. What are you doing there, buddy? Dude, he's big chunky. Oh, God. He looks pissed, too. What are you doing there, buddy? You hanging out? How'd that foothold treat you? Yeah, you didn't probably like that, did you? No, you didn't. Billy, hang on a second, buddy. Well, we got old Ricky. This is this is a dog proof. See, if you want to catch raccoons, dog proofs are where it's at, folks. But we do need to go mess with that bobcat trap. But hey, first trap, first animal trapped. Heck yeah. In the backyard for 2020. Of course, it's a big fluffy raccoon. You might think they're cute and cuddly, so they eat your farm animals. And then it's freaking war. So we're gonna go ahead and take this guy out. Blinded by the light. All right, well, buddy's toast, but look at this. Wait, but here's the question. Where's the pan cover? Look at that. Wait, and there's, hang on, there's no, there's uh, well, unless, oh, maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't use wool. Did I use wool for this one? Cause it's not, there's a little piece of fluff there where the wool is gone. Oh, my pan cover's back here. What the hell? All right, we're gonna move this out of the way. Look at this. The pan cover's back there. How does something move the pan cover without hitting the pan? We I, Now I really wish we'd have had a camera on this one. Because this is the old bobcat set, which the feather's still doing feather things. But that's, like, how does that get moved without setting it off? This is crazy. I've never, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen one, like, literally rip a pan cover completely clean off. I wish the, tra the trap needs to be further down or we need to move this feather. We could move the feather. It just needs to be, like, the feather needs to be dangling over here a little bit more. Maybe the, right there. Maybe that one, we could try it. It's a little, eh, it's not that high up. We can try it. This will be a little bit more above it. So something was here. Now, I, see, that's why I wish I, I wish I had trail cameras over all of them because I really want to know what animal was taking the pan cover. Was it a raccoon? Was it a bobcat? Was it a coyote? Like, what do you guys think? What do you think can get in there and rip apart pan cover? Oh, yeah, that's better. If they come try to play with it, they're going to hit it. But how do you, how do you move a pan cover without, like all the dirt's gone. Like there's no dirt. Something literally dug it up. It's like this trap didn't fire, but that trap looks pretty, like set pretty well. I might dig out some dirt under it just to make sure and kind of reset it. But we got one raccoon. He's toast down there. And we've got uh, one more, two more footholds and a, a, I think one more dog proof to check, but hey, okay, at least we got one raccoon. Shoo! All right, last trap, nothing. But this was the road trap right here. That's it, looks so good. It literally just looks so good. Like it's just right off the side of the road. And man, well, nothing's really messed with this. I'm gonna go ahead and uncover it, throw some new dirt on it, new bait, new lure, and, and we'll see kind of what happens. But we got old Jimmy back here. How you doing, Rick? Sounds good. We're gonna go ahead and get him skinned up. Of course, we've got to uh, indulge ourselves in the delicacy of backyard trapping, which is gonna be eating some raccoon. But we're gonna do something different. Before, I think we've only done fried raccoon, right? Yeah. It's not, did, like, it's okay. One. It's not bad. It tastes like fried gizzards, if you guys ever had that. But I'm a big fan of jerky. I feel like I can make anything taste good if you marinate it long enough and make jerky out of it. So we're gonna try to make raccoon jerky today. That's gonna be the plan. But we're gonna get this guy rebated, take him back, hang him up, skin him, and get the meat off it. And then we're gonna marinate. And I'll kind of walk you guys through process of raccoon jerky and let you guys know how it is. You guys stay tuned. That bowl's gonna be empty. Bailey, you're ruining the audio. Hey guys, welcome back. Look at our raccoon here. Who wouldn't want to stick that piece of meat in their mouth, right? What's funny is when I put this in this bowl, it was dry. Like the juices, I did not add. It was a dry, we did a dry Cajun cure. It's not sure about it's it. It's juicy. It's, it's stiff. This meat's kind of stiff, not gonna lie. It's not too bad, I probably should wash my hands. Anyways, all right, now we're back. So let's go ahead, we gotta dry these guys off. These are our jerky strips. Like I said, they've been curing for a couple days now. That, see that silver skin can't be good for you, huh? I mean, I've just, heard this, I've heard it's texture, I heard. I've heard, I've heard like silver skin in general is just not a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Seems like a lot of work though. I know, it's better like it's better to take it off now than earlier. Earlier, I couldn't get it off, otherwise I would have. Yeah, I feel like that's not gonna, it might not. We can leave it on 
I mean, it's kind of a pain to take off. So we're just gonna go ahead and dry these guys off, laying them down, like I said, slice them up, threw them in some Cajun Cure for a couple days now, dry these guys off. Then we're gonna throw them on the grill at the lowest temperature. I think it goes down to like 165. Throw it on for at 165 for probably, this meat will probably take an hour and a half, maybe two hours. And we're gonna see. I would like to find a way to make raccoon good because we catch so many of them. Like, they're not that hard to skin. They're not the easiest. They're really not that bad. So I'd hate, you know, if we can find a way for it to taste good, at least the meat's going to good use. We're not just throwing them in a ditch because that's what most people do with raccoons. Uh, most people don't eat raccoons. Most people don't eat half the stuff we eat. But I'm determined to find a, a good recipe. I, I think it's possible. We've, we've made worse things taste okay. I mean, we've made raccoon taste okay. But I think this is probably our best bet. So go ahead and just dry it. You want, you want it dry. You don't want, you don't want your jerky to be... Well, you do want it to be moist, but not when you're going in. It's going to help kind of dry it out and just make it overall look better. See that silver? I'm not sure about that skin. That skin might be the deal breaker. There's some pieces with it, some pieces It'll without eat. it. So go ahead. There's some fat. I know you're not supposed to have much fat on jerky. I've heard that can kind of like mess it up a little bit, but what if this is better than Jack's, Jack Link's? Like, what if we just like discovered That's raccoon, fine. just like the filet mignon and jerky? That's thing. Maybe we'll just start start a raccoon jerky business or something <laughs> like that. If you guys want that, let me know. No, I don't think you can sell game, but all right. She's dried off, let's get her on the grill. We're just gonna throw it on a cold grill, that's fine. It's just turkey. So go ahead and just line your grill. This meat's really not that thick, so we should be okay. Uh, just lay it on here, like I said, I'm doing 180. I think the smoke temp on this is like 160, so maybe let it run for 180 for the first hour, then smoke it on low last hour. Maybe that'll help dry it out a little bit. I'm not an expert. Done this with duck a couple times. See, that's a chunky piece. I think I might take an extra minute. I've done it with duck and it turns out okay. I'm not sure about the raccoon strap, but I will be sure to let you guys know if it's good or garbage. Couple more and boom. There you go. Raccoon jerky. We'll check on it in an hour. See you guys then. Shoo! We're back, folks. All right. I even had time to change and shower and I got to get out of here, but raccoon jerky complete. I ended up kicking it up a little bit. It actually took over two hours, two and a half hours so far, but it's looking pretty darn good. I mean, it looks like duck jerky, duck jerky we've done before, so. I'd say this piece does not look that good. That's like the fat and stuff. What if, it, what if there's a little hair on there? Too. I ain't eating that piece. This piece looks Ooh, that's hot. I think it's gonna be chewier than duck. Probably. It's, yeah. You can't break. Yeah. Really? Is that it, bad? I mean, it ain't. Just get a little piece. That's hot. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Taste low. All right. That Cajun. Millie. Really? Want raccoon? It's kind of hot. You, you didn't even taste it. I will say, you would never know this is raccoon. Best raccoon we've ever ate. You would never know this is raccoon. Not even. Hey, you, Lucy, I'll give you a bite. Hang on. You would never know. It is. It's tough. Look at this. Oh, this maybe isn't done. Maybe that's why. I don't think that's done. I've been chewing for three minutes back here. Mm -mm. It could go longer. Here's the thing. Oh, I've, look at this one. That's not bad. Wait, give me some of that. Let's, we're splitting this three ways, boys. It's because there's a thinner piece. Okay, I'm gonna give you this one to you, Pool Jet. Don't eat it yet. That Fair. is good. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. Go Now you can go. Go ahead, go ahead. Come on, come on, come on. Go ahead. Well, it's not bad. It's not bad, right? No, that's actually pretty good. Like What's the, the seasoning you did? Cajun. Flavor or something? It was mm. Cajun. No. I can taste it. It's pretty good. Man, that was good. I don't think Maybe that guy would be as good. The like thin, flatter yeah. pieces are the we need, So I need to cut it a little thinner. So here's the thing. Here, here's what I think. Leave it on here for like 20 more minutes. Take it off, let it rest, and kind of dry out. And I think yeah. it would be better. Probably. I think I think it's... Yeah, like that don't look done. I mean, it's hot. It's hot, I mean, but you're not die, it don't but look it done, though. Longer. But it's not jerky. Yeah, it's more it's like not. a. It's more like a steak. So raccoon for, like, duck is literally done in like an hour and a half. The same yeah. thickness. I say thinner and Thin, longer. Thinner and longer. You want it thinner and longer? Always. Really? Every time. Really? You want some raccoon jerky, buddy? A little thinner and a little longer, I think, would help. I mean, it's good, though. Like, you the taste. To I feel like the taste is pretty good. This one bad. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> That's not bad. That was a good piece. Oh, one fell through. <laughs> oh, we lost one. This one's good. Look at that. That's a good piece. My piece ain't bad. Yeah. You would never know it's raccoon. Like, it just tastes like good meat. Like, yeah. beef jerky. And the seasoning's not much, because I just cured it. I didn't even season it. No, it would be better on that. The little wild game seasoning. I think next time... Come on, come on. Oh. I think next time we need to throw some wild game on it. I kind of want to eat this fatty piece just to prove Banjo wrong. Yeah. It's probably, maybe it slaps. Nah, it don't slap. It don't slap. I had a fat in mine and it took a while to chew. It tastes fine. <laughs> <laughs> Woo!
<laughs> you did <laughs> wrong. <laughs> what did that taste Not like? good. <laughs> my, my throat's on fire. It's burning. Why my, is your tongue tingling? No. Dude, my tongue is tingling. Just from that piece? Dude, bad. <laughs> they might have allergic reaction. Oh, like my no. tongue and throat are on fire, what and I didn't even—I didn't, didn't even your eat it. Your throat like close up from last year. Was it raccoon? Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember no, that? no, no. It was something like the hair you ate. Like, oh God. <laughs> That's what. It was. Oh God. <laughs> you had an allergic Rip. reaction last oh, year. Oh, I'm to toast. This. I'm I'm dead. You're like throat like closed up on you. Oh, dude, I'm dead. My tongue is just tingling. <laughs> oh, Rip. Yeah, you're done. I think I might die. Oh my God, I'm definitely I'm definitely gonna die. Wait, what 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 did have hair on it last year? It was something like this. Did Lucy go and get that piece? Oh, Lucy! No, you're gonna die, Lucy. She's eating it. She ate it. Did she find it? Yeah, she ate it. That's a good dog. Lucy. Okay, yeah, some, okay, we ate something last year, and it had just like, you know, hair, like, but what would it have been? Would it have been Bobcat? I don't think it was Bobcat. Something had, it was something that like had a little bit of hair and you're like, yeah, it's whatever. And like, dude, my throat was just done. For like two days. Two yeah. Three days. Oh, my, I can feel it right now. My tongue is just tingle. It's just tingle. Like, I think you're allergic to raccoon. I think I'm going to die. I'm going to try another piece though. This little one don't have hair on it. Oh, there's a hair on that I one. know. I just saw hair. <laughs> Get hair off there. How's that guy? Flavor's not bad. Very chewy though. A little chewy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that piece is pretty good. Anyways, there's. I would say if you guys trap raccoon and you want to do hey, something, huh? I thought of it. There's the goat milk. Yes. Has hair on it. Yes. So maybe it's oh. like just animal hair in general. Yeah. You might just. Be we we, we to. milked a goat and like you know a couple right. hairs mm -hmm. fell in the the milk and I about died. So that's mm -hmm. botch. Uh, but goat milk, I'm not allergic to. It just had some hairs in it. Anyways, if you guys want to go trap some raccoons, I would suggest making jerky out of it. That that kind of leads me to believe we can pretty much taste take anything and make it taste good. Comment down below some ideas on how to make it more tender. Maybe you guys know. I, I think thinner strips, dry it out a little bit more. Maybe there's some other te tips, techniques, tactics that you guys have at home to make me a little bit more tender. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the first trapping episode of the season in the backyard. We're going to go down to the farm and set more traps in the backyard, try to catch a bobcat, all sorts of other stuff. This is just kicking it off for the year. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. We will catch you guys in the next one. And